Warren, I'll start off with you, if I may. Just your, your thoughts on uh, team selection and also with uh, with what happened at the weekend in mind. Just uh, a- any injuries or niggling injury worries that you've picked up in the past few days? No, the boys are all pretty good, but they're a bit sore after the Japan game, which you, you expect a few, few knocks and stuff. Uh, but pretty much uh, everyone said uh, um, is, is pretty good, really. Um, Anthony Watson had a, a sore toe, which we injected, and Dan Bigger had a, a, a knee, which had a cortisone as well. So just a couple of minor, minor complaints, um, but nothing, nothing serious. And in terms of your thoughts on, on the team selection now for, for the opening game, actually, in South Africa? Yeah, well, we spoke always about giving everyone an opportunity in the first three games. So uh, Josh Adams is the one who doubles up um, and we've made 14 changes and the guys are starting to gel together. We um, with the aspects of the Japan game we were very happy with, and particularly the first half. And they played a, a different style and put us under a bit of pressure. But the boys, um, you know, they look pretty sharp in the last um, couple of training days. And um, we've got another session this afternoon and before the captains run tomorrow. Warren, just can you just give us a sense of just how how different the tour is? You know, obviously we know that there'll be no fans, but also just with what you've got to work with the, the COVID restrictions, the challenges, of the, you know the, the 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 compact nature of the tour. How different is it for you, and what challenges does it does it propose now? Now you're actually down there. Ironically, I think it's it, it's the new normal at the moment. It's kind of not. It's not a it's not a challenge for us every day. We've kind of got accustomed to it. The players, in particular, have been through a couple of campaigns where they've got used to this. So every, everything's just we've just carried on, and you now we are we're aware of the social distancing and wearing our masks and everything, and um, and cracking on with training. So yeah, you know, there's not there's not a heck of a lot of difference um, from normal campaigns. Probably just the not quite having the same freedom to be able to get out of the hotel and boys going to have a cup of coffee and, and have a look around. But apart from that, um, you know, I find it's, it, it's quite similar. And particularly for us now, the challenge is uh, handling two games a week. Um, you know, that's going to be the, the real challenge for, for the team and the coaching team just having to deal with that. Um, Warren, just a final question to you before I move to Stuart, if I may, just picking up on your last answer there. Just when you're on on a, on a tour now, where you you know you, you blink and you've got another game coming around, the importance of of winning and the momentum that that provides for later in the tour. Yeah, I think uh, it goes hand in hand. You know, like I said, we we wanted to give everyone a chance and that opportunity, and if we can build that momentum and play well and and gain confidence off it, off that, that's you know, that's something we want to achieve. Um, there's also about creating some comp. Um, some combinations as well and, and seeing how different combinations may work out. You know, we're, we're a little bit limited with that in terms of the, the five games here in South Africa and then and then in the, the Test Match Series. So, you know, there's, I think the exciting thing from a coaching point of view, I don't, not, don't know so much about the players, but just the amount of competition that we've got in the squad. And, you know, if you look at who's going to be played um, the first couple of games and then who hasn't played and probably will play against um, the Sharks. You can see you know, the rest of the players in the squad will get an opportunity, and then you'll see prob- probably who the loose forward trio will be for next week. So, yeah, it's different different players and, and players players having that chance. So, um, yeah, it's going to come around pretty pretty thick and fast. Thanks for your, for your time, Warren. Uh, Stuart, just if I may, a quick couple of questions. Um, just... You know your thoughts. You know you're captaining an iron side. I I can't imagine what that feels like. Can you can you tr- can you try and describe what that actually what actually feels like? Um, for me, it's a it's a huge huge honour. I think uh, you know as a kid growing up, you watched all the different lines DVDs and videos, and and you know I had the dream of of representing them one day. But to be given the opportunity to captain the side is um, is absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm I'm over the moon. I'm. Uh, delighted with it, with the opportunity. Um, you know, a huge amount of confidence. Uh, you know, putting me to to lead this lead this side. But for me, it becomes a lot easier when you've got a lot of experience within the squad as well. So I'm um, I'm hugely excited for the challenge. Um, Stuart, just Warren earlier just gave a, an answer about you know the, the new normal that that is COVID. But as the players, it it it, it can be slightly different. Um, can I ask maybe just sort of what you guys are doing to try and 
sort of stave off boredom um because it is going to be a very very different tour as you said you, you, your freedoms are slightly restricted um how does that impact on you as players and maybe what are you coming up with to try and make sure you can switch off and you and you don't get you don't get cabin fever yeah i think look, there's a, a lot of experience within the squad we've had you know all nations cup last year the six nations just gone um and we know what works best for for individuals and for for us as a team so you know, there's entertainment committee. There's there's everybody. There's um, you know, a huge amount of uh, things for us to be doing within the hotel. Obviously, it would be ideal if we could get out, as as, as Warren touched on earlier, to to explore. But look, um, we're very fortunate. We we get to do our job. We get to continue to represent the Lions, um, and we'll do everything we possibly can to make sure we we continue this journey. Um, but yeah, look, there, there's a, there's a lot of things that we can we can do within the hotel that boys are enjoying each other's company. Um, and we're having a lot of fun on and off the training field um, and hopefully that will come out in the way that we want to play this weekend. Stuart Warren, thank you both for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you. Um, hi, guys. Um, Warren, when, when it comes to your 10-12, your I think a lot of Lions fans are really, really excited to see uh, Finn Russell and Owen Farrell together, two world-class players, but also two very different personalities, very different playing styles. What have you seen this week from those two to suggest they can gel as a really effective 10-12 partnership? Yeah, just, uh, you know, they've, they've worked really well together. And uh, just alluding to what Stuart said, I mean, that you know, Owen's had a huge amount of experience as um, third tour and, you know, captain of England as well. So he's adding a lot to the environment. And then, and then Finn... You know, has a slightly different way of playing, but I think he's you know, matured amazingly in the, in the last few years in terms of his game management and the way he controls the game. He's, we know what flair he has from an attacking perspective, but also it's just those little deft um, kicks, as well, attacking kicks that um, you know he's able to bring to his game. And I thought I thought against France, um, the way that he managed that game and his kicking game control was. Was outstanding. So yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting um, to have a look at, at that, that combination. Um, we do want to have a look at Owen at ten at some stage as well, and give him a, an opportunity there because that's where he's been picked. Um, but we know that he's equally comfortable in, in the twelve position. So so with Owen, there's a good chance we'll see him at ten soon. Even though picking him at twelve shows you're very open minded about where he might end up. Yeah, I think if you look back in, in two seventeen, um, you know, he, he played ten, and then we moved him to twelve. And I think the Crusaders game when when Johnny Sexton came on, and and that that combination, you know, went really well in, in that. And so, you know, it does give us a an opportunity to have a look at different combinations, and and um, you know, he's, he's very comfortable at both both ten and twelve. And just finally, for me, Warren, um, you mentioned yeah that phrase, the new normal. Earlier, we know. The COVID situation in South Africa is difficult at the moment. Have you found it mentally difficult as management and players to sort of adjust to, to actually being in South Africa and playing rugby at the moment? No, I don't think so. I think uh, the uh, are, it's you normally when you're on Lions tours. I mean, the thing that hits you the most is uh, how many fans are around the place and often in hotels and uh, and there have been times. Uh, Players and and management and myself, we've been in hotels and you've wanted to venture out for a cup of coffee and you've kind of walked out the door and there's just been a sea of red everywhere and you're thinking, oh, there's no way I'm getting to the coffee to shop to have a coffee. So you, you sort of head back into the sanctuary of the hotel. So um, yeah, so it's not. I, th I think uh, as Stuart alluded to, is you know we're having doing lots of different things and committees and uh, keeping ourselves entertained, but the whole focus is. You know, definitely on, on the rugby, and it'll come around really quickly. And it and it kind of doesn't feel once you once you're here and you're preparing for for matches, it doesn't feel you know hu hugely different from what it normally is. Thanks, Warren. Hi, it's Michael Corkin here. Um, can I ask you, given the fact, can I ask you, given the fact that there are so many um, new faces in amongst your coaching group, how you're actually coping with the the early stage of the sort of trying to coach two groups at the one time? Yeah, we really haven't. Uh, that's going to happen sort of this weekend. Uh, so we've got a captain's run tomorrow and then we'll we'll let the, the, the starting 15 go and then we'll work with the the other 20, 
22 players um, just to do some run through stuff to get themselves ready for next Wednesday. Um, and then on, on Saturday morning, we'll the non-23 will do some skills and some conditioning as well. So that, that'll that sort of start happening this weekend when we start looking at preparing two two sides a week, um, you know, from tomorrow onwards. Um, and, and you know, I can say the, the coaching team have been fantastic and um, um, you know, I think we've, we've worked really well together. You know, the preparation, the, the detail has been been excellent. And, and for us, you know, just trying to, Get across to the players what we're trying to achieve, and for them to get up to speed and 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 disseminate um, all the information. Um, you know that takes a little bit of time, and you, you've got to realise that uh, there will be some errors and some mistakes. And um, for us is to to keep working hard at that and being accurate and and communicate well, so that when we get to that test series, we're we're really uh, right on top of things. Thank you. And if I could ask Stuart just one question, if you don't mind, uh, please. Stuart, can I congratulate you on, on the captaincy? You must be looking forward to starting in the 15 shirt again, but I know you're a man who likes to kick um, the rugby ball around the place. Can you just talk about the difference from playing at normal level to um, altitude and how, how far back you've had to bring the kick into you in the last couple of days? Um, yeah, I've not had a, a huge amount of practice, to be honest. I think just um, Tuesday I had a couple of kicks and you can see there is a, a, a fair bit of um, a fair bit of difference, so it's something that, that quite excites me. But look, I think um, it's it's going to play advantage to to whoever's got the ball. I reckon playing the right areas, playing behind them. Um, but yeah, look, I think I think uh, if it comes to it, we'll, we might have a little a little pop at goal for for a bit of crack. But um, now, look, I'm absolutely delighted to, to be back playing. Um, it's been a a few weeks since I've started a game, um, but look, we're in a, a Completely different environment. We're representing the Lions, um, and it's a hugely exciting time for us all. And you know, the build-up has been has been very, very good. We, we've talked a lot about putting a marker down early doors and uh, and really starting this two in the best way possible. Um, and that comes down to to getting everything um, everything right uh, on Saturday evening. Thanks, mate. I hope it goes well for you. Thank you. Hi, gents. Thanks for your time. Uh, Stuart, I'll start with you, if that's all right. Congratulations on the captaincy. For you, when you think of a Lions captain, who comes to mind? Oh, um, I think for me, after watching the 97 Lions video about a million times, I've been able to quote 90% of it. I'd probably say Martin Johnson. Um, you know, I absolutely loved it. Uh, just, I think the the thing for me um, about being captain is that it doesn't change anything that you do. You go out there and you be your own man. You be your you be yourself. And and for me, I've never been the one that that will stand and scream and shout or you know boss people around. I, I like to lead by the way that I perform. And you know, I'm very, as I said earlier, I'm very fortunate within the within this team at the weekend. There's a huge amount of experience um, and some great leaders involved in this team. You know, Owen Farrell, Finn Russell, uh, you know, Maro Toji, Jamie George. Uh, for me, I just need to, to go out there and, and do my job. And um, as I say, that's the kind of way that I'll lead. And if there's something to be said, you know, I'm a very, very passionate player, very, very passionate rugby player. And um, I'm hugely honoured and excited uh, for this challenge ahead. And how are you feeling, Stuart, after obviously the disappointment of, of the Premiership final? I'd imagine you're quite keen to get back out there and put that behind you. Yeah, 100%. I think obviously in... You, you want to be involved and you want to win in every single game that, that, that you play. And unfortunately, it didn't quite come off for us at the weekend, which was bitterly disappointing. Um, but I've had to draw a line under that very, very quickly and, and get on with my next job. And you know, I'm very, very fortunate to be involved this weekend. And you know, I'm looking forward to, to getting out there and express myself um, and hopefully contributing to a successful start of, of, this, of this Lions tour. Well, good luck. Uh, Warren, if I can come on to you in terms of the captaincy, as Stuart's just mentioned, there are quite a few different leaders in your squad. So when you're looking for a captain for a game like this, what goes into that decision? Yeah, you're looking at players that have uh, had, had some experience and, and Stuart's on his third tour now. He's did a good job, a well, great job with, uh, with Scotland. Um, um, you know, he'd been come from a very successful club in Exeter, so you know, he's got those that experience and leadership skills. And as he said, he's very very calm and uh, you know goes out there and and leads from the front in terms of the way that he 
plays and, and delivers concise and clear messages without you know rambling on and raving and uh, there's just it's it's you know I, I really like his leadership style and the way that he's been with the with the team this week so um yeah, there's another other, a number of other players that um you know, potentially are in, co- in contention and we've got a very strong leadership group and we're going to need other players beside Connor Murray uh, through this tour to, to captain the side. So, um, you know, we are fortunate that we've got uh, a fair number of choices that we could possibly go to. And I think with the losing Alan Wynn, it's been now the responsibility sort of on, on the leadership group and other players in the squad to to step up and really support each other. And I think that's it's been that uh, they've done a great job in doing that and 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 taking on that mantle to to make sure that it's not just Stuart's responsibility, but everyone's, you know, those experienced players are taking a, a role in, in, in terms of communicating and, and taking some of the pressure off the captain. And as for your opponents this weekend, the Lions, what do you expect from them? They lost four or five in the Rainbow Cup. Yeah, we've had a reasonable, close, a good look at them and they're going to be strong up front and so for us, uh, the, the first game is always uh, uh, on tour is always you know difficult. Um, just uh, getting up to speed, uh, they're probably the least affected of the the five teams in terms of of the four teams in terms of um, the number of players that they would have lost to the Springbok squad. So you know they're going to be fairly settled and, and, and pretty strong. And and for a lot of these players, it's it's a once in a sort of lifetime opportunity to, to play against the Lions. So, um, you know, they're going to be incredibly motivated to want to go and play well. And, uh, you know, we, know, we understand there's not going to be any crowds, but that's not going to take away from their desire to to want to be the first team to, to try and beat the Lions on tour. And just very quickly, finally, from me, how's Luke Cowan Dickey? He's obviously passed the return to play protocol, but it looked like a nasty knock he picked up in that premiership final. How's he doing? Yeah, I spoke, when I spoke to him first of all, I asked him how he was, and he said he was fine. He said he'd never been uh, had a, had a knock like that before. So he's done all the return to play protocols, and he's started to take a, a, a part in in training. And so, look, he's another real competitor. Um, you've got we think we've got really experience in that that hooking position, and uh, the the three of them are going to really fight it out. And I'm sure when he gets his opportunity, he's going to make the most of it. Thanks very much. Hey Warren, sorry, uh, Beth here from ITV Wales. Ho- hope you're well. And um, listen, the, the, the good thing and the amazing thing about the Lions is, is the mix of all the home countries. They all bring with them different values and emotions. I'm just wondering how pleased are you with the mix, both on and off the pitch? I'm oh, very pleased. It's, uh, it's it's been outstanding so far. I mean, the boys have been great, and it's been uh, from our point of view uh, above expectation in terms of how well that they've gelled as a group um players you know there's, there's no clicks players are, are sitting with different and different with different teammates from different countries and you, you've seen that happen really really quickly and so that's a really pleasing sign that you know we we feel like we've picked a group of men that'll go out there they want to represent the lions and um perform at their, at their best but also to play um, you know, for, for each other and, and support each other and go into battle with each other um, to do their utmost to to hopefully win a, uh, a Lions series. Obviously, I'm from Wales. So a question on, on the Welsh selection. Obviously, Louis Rissam is the poster boy. He's the, the mascot keeper. How, how's he looking? Yeah, he's been doing well. He's still, there's still lots of things of his game. He's, he's a very young player that we're working hard in, in, in terms of... Um, you know, he's, a, he's been a bit like a sponge at the moment, sort of picking things up from the players and the players are working with him and, and talking to him and giving him lots of encouragement. We know how exciting he is on attack, um, but it's not just about attack. It's about lots of other things and at international rugby and, and at the highest level. And you know, he is working hard to, to on those aspects of his game and hopefully we can get, get him some some ball and see that um, that finishing power that he has and prowess that he has and, and show off some of that speed and the ability to score tries. 
I know you said about selection it was very difficult having to leave some some names out. Obviously, Kyle and Josh back in now. How how nice was it for you to make that call and you know and get them back in? Yeah, look, it probably it's not going to be the last calls that we're going to have to make because we know how tough and physical this is going to be. But uh, the guys that have come in, um, Josh Navidi and Adam Bed coming in, and obviously with Kyle coming in, he, look, Kyle's been outstanding in the way that he's he's fitted into the group and you know, he was a tourist in 2017 he's, he's trained exceptionally well he's um he's really setting some of the, some really high standards at the moment and, and josh navidi and adam bed have been great so far they've, they've fitted in and so look it's been it's been reasonably seamless at, at the moment so and it's been pleasing for for those guys and also just the way that the rest of the squad have welcomed them in and, and you know and um so that's that's been great. Last question for me. We spoke when you were coach of the Bar Bars and you were saying how much you were looking forward to this. Are you enjoying it as much as you said you were going to be? Yeah, I mean the weather's pretty good at the moment, so it's, that's not that's not too bad. It's uh, look, there's always lots of pressure at international rugby at the highest level, and you understand that. And I don't think I'm any different from the players when game day comes around. I'm as nervous as anything. So. Um, and the thing about international rugby, the, the, it's either agony or ecstasy. There is nothing in between. And, uh, and so hopefully we can get as much ecstasy as we possibly can in terms of enjoying uh, the way that we play and getting results. We've well, certainly got nice tans. Anyway, good luck for Saturday. And cheers. Thank you. How was that? Yeah, hi, hi there. Qu a question for um, uh, Stuart, please. Um, uh, Stuart, you've got a, a, quite a bunch of uh, Scots in the uh, in the side with you. Um, I, I, I know national national identities don't really matter in tour, but you, you, given that you've captained the side for the past couple of years, you must be pretty proud of how how the guys have come through. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know for the. The individuals that they've been working incredibly hard on our game for for a number of years, um, uh, and as Warren touched on earlier, we, we were making a rise as a Scottish national side. So, you know, I'm, I'm over the moon to to see so many boys representing the Lions here. But um, for us now, we're, we're all buying into the the British and Irish Lions badge, and, and we've all fitted in really, really well. Um, and yeah, look, we're here to do the the to do one job, and that's to be part of a a successful tour. And um, you know, I say there is. A huge amount of competition for places now that now that we're here. Um, as I say, everybody's going to get an opportunity, so hopefully everybody shines and, and makes it very very difficult for for Warren and the rest of the coach inside to to pick their team moving forward. Cheers! And just a second from me, the uh, the, the news came out two or three hours ago that you'd be captain. The uh, have you been able to speak to to family, especially your dad, maybe? Um, and also, have you had any message from Alan Wynn at all? Um, yeah, I spoke to I spoke to my parents early on in the week and, and told them the news. Um, I, I couldn't keep it to myself for, for that long, so I told my parents and my brother uh, and obviously my wife. Um, so absolutely delighted with that. And you know, for me, I'll, I'll, I'll probably pick up the phone to Alan over the next few days and and pick his brains. Um, you know, obviously bitterly disappointed for for Alan and picking up an injury, but he'll still have a, hu a huge impact on on this tour in terms of what he's done in the last few weeks. Uh, and what he'll do moving forward as well is just the, the the type of guy that he is. He's an absolute legend of the game. So um, I'll definitely definitely be picking his brains. That's for sure. Cheers, Hoggy. Go well. Thank you, Stuart. Warren was asked about the differences of this tour, and there's obviously been a lot of talk about the absence of crowds. But for someone who's toured before, what are the constants in Alliance Tour that you feel are still there? Part of the same spirit that you had four and eight years ago. Yeah, look, it's a, a very, very special, um, you know, time for us all to be involved in the, in the British and Irish Lions. I think, you know, as a kid growing up, you, you watched it all, you saw everybody being involved, you saw the, the travelling fans, how much it meant to everybody. Um, and yes, look, as we touched on earlier, it is the new norm. We, we can't have any fans and it is, it is disappointing, but we've all played for the last kind of year or so um, with, with no or limited crowds and, it's all about the energy that, that we create within the squad, the buzz that we build um, from a Monday right through to the to the Saturday. Um, and it's it's massive when it comes to the game, you know, little little victories that you that you achieve um, 
within within the moments of the game, you, you celebrate massively and you pick up a huge amount of energy from that. And it really kicks you on. Uh, I mean, things don't quite go to plan. We, we, we regroup and we, and we start again. And as I say, it's all about the collective effort and the buzz and, and the energy that we can create. And, you know, I've seen it, you know, in last week's game against Japan. I've seen it in training this week. Um, and excited, I'm excited to be a part of it. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys.